Hi everybody, so this is a little short video for um, the week three homework where we will be looking at the difference between drawing from direct, ob direct observation and drawing from a photograph uh, of that uh, same setup from a uh, still life. So the first thing that I want to talk about is setting up a good still life. Um, sometimes um, it can happen that a great still life is just a, a found set of objects, maybe a cluttered desk, a sink full of dirty dishes, or um, the stuff that you might have sitting around uh, in your bathroom by the mirror. Um, and maybe maybe that is a, is a good organization. Sometimes, though, you might want something a little bit more um, deliberately set up. And in that case, I've got this little setup. What I would like you to do, you can go either way, but um, if you're going to set up a still life, be thoughtful about it um, in the way that you gather um, the objects and the way that you place them. So generally, um, in a good still life, you want um, three uh, at least or five or more objects that are um, have a variation in their size and in their quality. Um, and in this case, I have uh, these um, five objects here setting on this old uh, piece of styrofoam as, as the setup. And um, they're all of different qualities, they have different sizes. Um, and I've arranged them in a way where they relate well with one another um, as their setting. I open those scissors up so that they directly connect from one object to the next. The circle of this uh, ellipse and the circle of that ellipse mirror each other in the uh, sort of circular shapes here. This line is set up to parallel that line and contrast this line here. So um, is as opposed to having it set something like that, which kind of is haphazard and sucky um, if I were to do this, right? I might get lucky and land a decent still life, but it doesn't have the same overall um, formal quality uh, and compositional movement. So um, be aware of that. Um, be aware um, that the still life objects you set up, if they're too simple, you're gonna create a boring drawing. Um, if they're overly complex, um, if I have a bunch of complex sunflowers, for example, um, I might have to focus in and uh, draw just, you know, uh, a, a little bit of what I'm looking at uh, because we have uh, limited time. Well, we have a lot of time. We have limited time for this project. So that's generally the way that you want to set up a still life. Um, one last thing on it. Um, it's good to be aware of the tension between the objects and how close you set them. Sometimes a, a good still life will be super cluttered and everything will be stacked on itself. The, you want that energy, the synergy of that. Um, sometimes though, if, um, if objects are set too far apart, then they don't relate to one another anymore. So if you imagine they each have their gravitational pull like the little bodies of gravity, you know, where do you set this where it has the most um, uh, pleasing uh, or tense, depending on what you're going after, relationship between the other objects that you're sitting, setting up. Um, so be, be thoughtful. Uh, still life artists who are professionals spend lots of time setting up their stuff. Anyway, so there's that. And lighting it too. You want beautiful cast shadows. So after you get your still life set up, or perhaps you're lucky and you find the most uh, awesome pile of dirty dishes, uh, whatever way it is, um, get yourself set up to draw. And um, I want to go over what? Um, here we go. Okay, I got to turn this down. Like, All right, here we go. Like that. Sorry about the shakiness. Um, all right, so your drawing practice, um, your basic drawing practice ritual. So every day when you sit down and begin your studio practice, um, you, you 
sit down and begin to draw or paint or sculpt uh, or make videos or, or designs or whatever you're doing, it's good to get up, uh, set up a ritual for yourself. Um, and for us in, in drawing person, uh, purposes, um, I think a good thing to do, sit down, put on some good groovy music that's going to keep you involved in your drawing and relaxed. Get some tea or coffee so uh, you have something to keep you going or, or whatever. Maybe, uh, maybe some wine if you're 21 um, that's going to keep you going and engaged. Um, and then you want to do some warm-ups. You don't want to jump into your drawing cold. So that's why we're studying blind contour. So here I've got myself warmed up and uh, get my eyes and hands going. The next thing to do um, for the uh, purpose that purposes that we're doing is to create some thumbnails, thumbnail drawings. And as a review, um, thumbnail drawings are little tiny uh, explorations of the subject matter that you're dealing with. Uh, in this case, it's still life, but it could be a landscape or a portrait or um, just ideas out of your head, but you're looking at composition. So here is my first attempt um, at it, and uh, I just kind of sat down and was like, okay, I'm interested in this. What I ended up doing was placing this vase right in the middle of that composition, and um, that creates um, somewhat asymmetrical composition, but this portion of this drawing would be boring and useless. There's nothing happening there. There's nothing returning the eye. So my next attempt is here. So I, in this attempt, I moved these objects over to occupy the left side of this drawing space a little bit. And I focused in a little bit more on that pair of scissors down there and the pen. Um, and I liked that pretty well, although I found this relationship here between uh, the, the back of the the table that it's setting on, that styrofoam, and this to be too equal and kind of double-weighted. E things that are equal cancel each other out and destroy uh, movement and tension and interest. So I decided, oh, here, I'm going to go and, and make this a, a horizontal composition instead of a vertical composition. And this is pleasing to me. that It's uh, asymmetrical. Uh, I've got most of the action here and this nice resting space over here. Um, and this might be something I would pursue if I were painting. I've got a lot of this. I could occupy that space beautifully with color. But as a drawing, and if I'm going to draw what's back there, it's my boring window, right? So that's, there's nothing cool back there. That could work. But what I did was I decided to go back then and um, move this, uh, go back to a vertical composition, move this uh, um, sort of uh, a horizon line or the back space of that styrofoam down a little bit, creating more tension up at the top because they're not quite equal now. Um, I, I drew this so that the pen was touching this picture frame and the bits of the scissors were touching those picture frames and this cup was writing this edge. So it's got a nice negative space here and this kind of moves and flows throughout. So I'm satisfied with that composition. And so uh, I'm gonna move to a bigger sheet of paper. So that's the next thing is to sit down and begin drawing. And I'm just gonna draw for a few minutes here, uh, so I don't wanna bore you for a long time, but I do want to reinforce a few things um, about how to proceed and continue and make sure this is all gonna be on here. I know this is light and you can probably barely see um, the drawing. And that's because I'm drawing with a 2H pencil. I want this, uh, we're gonna, I wanna finish these drawings out uh, in your homework. I, you can be doing this in your sketchbook. I wanna finish these out in pen, but I, um, I'm gonna draw the underdrawing in this pencil so I can feel free, uh, more free to sketch it and lay it out in this uh, hard pencil before I begin to use the, the inking pen and ink it and finish it. So um, I'm uh, using my, uh, fantastically appropriate drawing grip so that I can um, lay this out and get get the uh, smooth action that I need to. I'm not doing this. That's gonna uh, hinder me. I'm staying relaxed. 
get this uh, vase drawn in here. I'll draw it a little harder than I normally would in hopes that you all can, can see it. So our aim is to study line. And if, in this case, if I'm making beautiful lines that are descriptive of the objects I'm drawing, I'm not concerned necessarily with proportion and perspective. Those, for this uh, homework assignment, are secondary and I don't want to worry about them too much. I would rather sacrifice accuracy of proportion and perspective for the sake of line character and uh, movement. Okay, so I'm just laying this out here, getting an idea of where I want these shapes. And once I am kind of satisfied with it, I drew this bottle a little too short and squat. And if this were a study in perspective and proportion, I would make an alteration there before I go to this next step. which is, let me get this in here, get the scissors and the front edge of the still life. Okay. Okay, so now let me see if you're seeing, yeah, it's all right, you can kind of see that. I, uh, now that I have that laid out, um, and uh, you can spend more time on it than I am, and I encourage you to. Um, I just don't want to take up your time watching me do it. I'm going to take the, the, the pen, and um, I'm going to begin, uh, now that I know where everything goes, I'm going to start inking the, uh, and now I'm going to pay much closer attention in these uh, petals, for example. I'm going to look really closely at the character of each one because they're amazing and beautiful, um, each on their own. And I really am banking on getting some of these um, forms into my visual memory. So later when I'm drawing, I can just refer to my memory about how to draw a flower or a vase. Um, or whatever that I have in my memory. So that's what this is about. And it's about getting your eye-hand coordination down. So patience, patience, patience. Lots of looking and seeing. And I wanna look at the character of everything. So the lines that I'm drawing to describe these petals are going to be different than the lines I'm going to draw to describe the sort of mechanical, smooth mechanical shape of this vase. That's one long, smooth line. I'm not giving it texture like I would in this bit of uh, leaf down here, which is sort of feels rough in my hand when I handle it.
All right. I think that uh, that gives you a good idea of um, what I'm talking about here. So that's part one of the assignment. So I want you to do two drawings for the homework. One, from direct observation like that. And two, um, from a photograph that you take of the same still life. Um, and I want to really explore the difference between, I want you to learn and explore the dis difference between observational drawing and drawing uh, from a photograph or through a lens and how each of them have benefits and uh, drawbacks and something that you have to experience. Um, a lot of artists in contemporary world are using both because we have these wonderful devices now. And so for the next drawing, I want you to take a picture of that still life. And here's my picture I took of this. So I can get on my phone here. And the advantage is I can, I can crop this, I can do all kinds of things to it, but um, also, I can get a vantage point on this still life. And I really like how this looks from up above. I like how these diagonals are now a part of the composition and this break up, diagonal breakup of space, like even out in that background area, those geometric shapes um, are in contrast with the organic shapes that are throughout here. So I, you can get a vantage point that you can't any other way using a photograph. Um, and then if I'm super interested in uh, fine detail. Of course, I can, I can focus in on the the leaves or or flowers, um, and really look closely at what's going on. But um, so the second drawing would be to follow the same pattern as that. Find a good composition, and maybe you do that through cropping on your phone. Once you do, then uh, execute that drawing again on the eighteen by or on the uh, on your sketchbook paper. When you're done with both of them, take photographs of them. Um, uh, and put them in a Word doc. Uh, and I would like a few sentences from you about how you find these differences between observation and working from a photograph. If there's advantages and disadvantages, um, some people like one way more than the other and some people like a hybrid of the two. Just like your thoughts on that. And um, looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Be creative, have fun in your studio, and enjoy.